Hey everyone, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. In this video we're going to talk about an example of solving a simple first order differential equation uh, using the particular and homogeneous solution, sort of as a review, but also something we'll be using a lot in this class. So I've written here the differential equation dy dt plus 3y of t is equal to x of t, and we want to solve this for the case when x of t is uh, uh, a specific input, say e to the minus 5t u of t. And so for that particular system, and we also want to assume the system is linear and time invariant, which means we have the initial rest version of auxiliary condition. So that tells us Right. In general, initial. what does initial rest say? Initial rest says as long as the input is zero, the output is still zero. So as long, if x of t is zero for some time up until t naught, the output is still zero ten. Then, and this is important. This is the an auxiliary conditions for linear constant coefficient differential, differential equations. This guarantees us that we'll have an LTI causal system. These are the auxiliary conditions, or, or what mathematicians sometimes call initial value problems. You might have seen that in your differential equations textbook. So we know when we have solutions of this form that y of t, for equations that are constant differential, linear constant coefficient differential equations like this, that our output is going to have two pieces. It's going to have a particular solution and a homogeneous solution. And the particular solution is the solution to the case when, uh, to the specific input we have going in, whereas the homogeneous is a general solution to the case where the input x of t is zero, because we can always add some multiple of that to the final solution. Okay, so again, the homogeneous is solving the case when we set that right-hand side x of t equal to zero, as a, whereas the particular is for the specific case where the x, we set x of t into its particular value in this problem, e to the minus 5t, for t greater than 0. So let's, we're going to break this down, solve each one of those one at a time. So homogeneous first, and then particular, and then we use the initial rest condition to find the unknown constant and combine them. So that's sort of our roadmap. Uh, find the homogeneous solution first, then the particular solution, and then we combine them and use the initial conditions, the initial rest condition, to find the unknown constant from the homogeneous equation. So let me uh, move to a new page and we'll set that up. So just writing down what I said a second ago, our plan is to solve for the homogeneous part y sub h. Second, we'll go solve for the particular part y sub p. Then we'll define y of t to be the sum of those two. And then in this case, the, we'll use the initial rest to solve the unknown constant in y h of t, the homogeneous case. This is a first order differential equation. Uh, maybe we should have touched on that earlier. Right, we know that because the highest derivative is a is the first derivative, so that means it's first order. Uh, and since it's first order, there'll just be one unknown constant in the homogeneous solution we need to find. All right, so let's start on y sub h of, of t. So when I'm solving the, the homogeneous solution y h of t, again, that's the case where I want to set x of t equal to 0. And, and usually, right, this is setting, oh, wrong tool. So we're going to set x of t equal to 0, so that we have dy dt plus 3y of t equals 0. And and for linear constant coefficient equations, the first thing we do is we just guess the solution is going to have the form of a complex, of an exponential. So we have a e to the st, whereas s is some, a and s are unknown constants we're going to solve for. We'll get s from the form of the equation, we'll get a later from the initial conditions. So if we plug this in up here, right, our dy dt here, when I take the derivative, I'd have uh, a times the derivative of e to the st, which will bring an s down. So I'd have a times s, e to the st, plus 3 times y, which would be 3a, e to the st, equals 0. And so to solve this for s, we need to go through and can't divide through by, well, I can divide everything through by a, and that leaves me s times e to the st plus 3e to the st equals 0. And then I could actually uh, divide through everything through by e to the st and cancel those out, and I'll be left with that s plus 3 equals 0. So s equals minus 3. 
right? So this important. So we know now now know that our homogeneous solution y sub h of t is some unknown gain a times e to the minus three t, and this holds again. We're looking at solutions for the region t greater than zero here because we want an LTI causal system. So we don't know this A yet. We're going to have to wait until we get the particular solution and put them back together. All right, so moving on to the next page, we're going to look for the particular solution. All right, we've used the U of T to focus our attention here, saying, well, that input X of T had a U of T in it, so we can just restrict our attention to T greater than zero for that region. So in this region, when I take, uh, and I'm going to guess, my uh, in this region, my solution y is going to be proportional to the input. Again, for constant coefficient difference equations, for uh, we, we generally assume the particular solution will be proportional to or similar in some way to the, to the input function. <clears throat> so we're going to guess and then confirm that it works, that y p of t is some other unknown gain, we'll call it capital K, e to the minus 5t u of t, right? So this is some multiple of, in, of the input, right? This is basically just saying I've got some unknown scaling factor times x of t. And then for t greater than 0, we're going to plug this in again. So when we take the derivative of this with respect to t, we'll get minus 5k e to the minus 5t plus uh, 3 times k e to the minus 5t is equal e to the minus 5t. And we're just, we've ignored the unit steps because we're focusing on the time where t is greater than 0. So all those u of t's are just equal to 1 in this region. Right, so when I do this, now I can multiply everything through by, uh, <clears throat> by e to the 5t to cancel it out. Right, if I multiply, so I put that over here, I could multiply by e to the 5t on both sides of the equation. This would be e to the minus 5t, e to the plus 5t, leaves me with just e to the 0, which is 1, and the same with all these. So all three of these just become 1 when I multiply through by e to the 5t. And so I'm left with minus 5k plus 3k equals 1. So when I solve that, I get uh, minus 2k, or capital K here. Let me make it clear these are all capitals. So these are all capital K. It's 1. So that unknown gain in this case would be minus a half. So my particular solution, y p of t, is minus 1 half e to the minus 5 t u of t. If I use the u of t, or I can just say for t greater than 0. So now if I put them together for step three where I combine the solutions, right, my solution is the sum of the homogeneous in the particular form. So I go back a couple pages to find my, my homogeneous solution. So I get my a e to the three, e to the minus three t. Right, and for uh, my particular solution, I just need to back up one page. And I get my minus one half e to the minus five t. So this is my solution for t greater than 0. And now the only thing I need to do is to solve for a. And here's where the initial uh, rest condition comes in. As we know, since x of t, which is e to the, well, e to the minus 5t u of t, right? this u of t is important, right? Because this guarantees that is equal to 0 for t less than 0. Then we also need, or less than, we also need, right, for initial rest, we need y of t equal to 0 for t less than 0 for initial rest. So to keep things continuous, that tells us right at 0, just, just the moment after 0, we need that y of 0 is equal to 0, but it also has to be equal to a e to the minus 3t and minus 1 half e to the minus 5t, right? All this evaluated at t equals 0. So when I put in t equal to 0, I get a e to the minus 0 minus 1 half e to the minus 0. So both these e to the zeros become 1. 
and I'm left at 0 is equal to a minus a half, or a is equal to 1 half. So I, that gives me the unknown constant that was hanging around for my homogeneous solution. So I can plug that in now to get my final total solution. All right, so my solution here says it's one, my uh, output is 1 half e to the minus 3t minus 1 half e to the minus 5t, and this is for uh, t greater than or equal to 0. So uh, that's a reminder or sort of refresher on solving these first order differential equations. Uh, again, the key is often taking the for constant coefficient differential equations, assuming the homogeneous solution is e to the st and just plugging it in and solving for the s's. For the particular solution, assuming the solution is proportional to the, the input is usually a good first guess. There are other times where we, we need to manipulate the form some. But to, to wrap up again, our, you know, our three main steps, our main steps for today were, you know, solve the homogeneous equation by setting the input x of t to zero, and that will give us a solution that's solved everything except for the, the unknown constant scaling factor. Then we solve the particular solution by solving, assuming the output is proportional to the input for t greater than zero. Then step three, we combine those using the initial rest condition, and and in that case, that's the initial rest says that as long as the input is zero, the output will be zero too. And then finally, that lets us solve for continuity for that unknown uh, value using what mathematicians would call an initial value problem here. Okay, so that's all. I'll stop this video here, and uh, I'll make you another one about block diagrams in a few minutes.